Sitting in the pews, listening to the word, giving, that comes with it. But the calling is something totally different. He's calling you. Because he wants to put that light back in the church. He wants to put that fullness back in the church. Because the lamp of God has gone out. He wants to restore the lamp of God in the church. Church, we haven't seen what the early church saw. That it should have never left. It didn't die with the last apostle. There's nothing in the word that says that. If the power didn't die, we changed. Because you say what to go. We change. Jesus didn't change. He's just saying, this day, today, and forever. This is what he wants to do is restore. Mm -hmm. Because we're going to be in an end time church. We don't know how long it's going to last. It could be our children and our grandchildren and their grandchildren. But these precepts need to be taught. They need to be taught. Not only to us, but we need to teach them to those who come after us if Jesus tarries. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's tarrying too long. That's up to him, though. Nobody knows the day of the hour. But we can get started now. Praise God. We're in a renewal, a restoring, a restoration of the lamp of God. He said, the Lord called Samuel. And he answered, here am I. And he ran to Eli. Wait a minute. He ran to Eli because he didn't know no better. He's little. Here am I, for you called me. And he, Eli said, I called not, lie down again. And he went and laid down. And the Lord called in again, Samuel. And Samuel rose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for you did call me. And he answered, I called not, my son, lie down again. There's many people being called by the Holy Ghost, yet they're running to their preaching. <laughs> hey, maybe you can call me back you? <laughs> you call me to do something to church? Now the Lord's called you to speak to your neighbor, but you're not listening. Go lie down. Listen to him. <laughs> Eli said, called you. What do you keep coming to me for? Poor Samuel, he didn't know no better. He heard some, he heard the Lord calling him. He thought he lied. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for you did call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be if he call you that you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and laid down in his place. Before I keep going, wouldn't that be awesome if we would just be that humble? Mm -hmm. And that surrender? <clears throat> to say, Lord, speak for your servant here. But we got other agendas. Lord, it needs to fit into my day planner. <laughs> because I got this to do at 11. And that to do at 1. And if it doesn't fit in there, I just can't fit you in. <laughs> Am I telling a lie? I'm not, I'm not telling the law. I'm telling you the truth. We got day planners. I know I got one. And I'm like, well, I got disappointment at 8. That one at 8.30. That one at 9. Lord, I don't know if I got time to minister to these two because I'm going to be running from bit to boat. From bit to boat in the street pool. I may get busy. But he says, speak. Speak, Lord, for your servant here. I don't care what's going on in the natural. I don't care if I get fired today, Lord God. Was he going to get you fired? But just be that way. Have that in your heart. It doesn't matter, Lord. I'm going to be your servant first. Amen? Amen. Amen. That makes sense. Now, I know it does. You're looking at me like, what are you talking about? Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> he comes first before our daily activities. He comes first before our family. Maybe, oh, no, you don't. Yes, he does. Amen. If we'd be first, if we put him first in our life and say, speak. Verse 10, and the Lord came and stood and, and called as other times, Samuel, Samuel. Man, you see that? The Lord came and stood. Because Samuel was willing to obey. If you're willing to obey God, He will call you and He will anoint you. And He will stand for you. Praise the Lord. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant hears. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel at which both the ears of everyone who hears it shall tingle. I believe that's what he's doing now. Mm -hmm. In our country and in the church. And it's tingling the ears of many. And some are aggravated. And some are upset. And some are just downright mad. <laughs> and some are just downright rebellious against what the Lord's doing right now. Mm -hmm. Because it's not what we thought he would do. <laughs> oh, I feel all because of that, y'all. Come on now. It's not what we thought he would do. Mm -hmm. Our imagination said, no, he's going to He's going to put somebody in and restore America and things going to... No. Nope. 
prophecy is being fulfilled, y'all. Israel is about to be saved again. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. The Lord is real. Remember Jesus said, to be thy will, this Amen. cup of suffering, be far from me, pass from me, but nevertheless, your will be done. Amen. That's what we need to pray. Speak Amen. for your servant here. Let your will be done. It doesn't matter if it tingles everybody's ears. If it makes them out of the Lord, let your will be done in the earth. Amen. If you've got understanding, we'll know God is in control. His wheels take your place. Oh, praise the Lord. I'm almost through, I promise. Mm -mm. In that day I will perform against Eli all the things which I have spoken concerning his house. That's the church at that time. When I begin, I will also make an end. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knows because his sons made themselves vile and he restrained them not. And therefore I have sworn unto the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged with sacrifice nor offering forever. That means they had entered into the unforgivable sin. Just like it says in Hebrews chapter 6. There is a sin that's unforgivable, the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. Evidently, this is exactly what Eli's sons had gone into because he said, not even my sacrifice. That, that sacrifice pointed to who? Jesus. So that he judged Eli's house. And that's what's happening now. 1 Peter 4, 17. Judgment comes first to the house of God. And he's telling us now that we are to look inward, not outward. I've seen so many people lately pointing fingers, like I said a while ago, looking outward, blaming the homosexuals, blaming the ungodly, blaming the Democrat. Hello. Blaming the Republican even. They didn't stand up enough. The church didn't stand up enough. Nobody stood up enough. <laughs> blaming everybody. Like Adam. It's that woman you gave me, Lord. It wasn't me. She put it in my hand. <laughs> then she shoved it in my mouth. Was that true? No. <laughs> But we do play the blame game. Oh, well, it's the North. It's all the Yankees' fault, man. They all the blue states up there. It's the Yankees' fault. We're going to blame somebody, but you know what he's saying, church? Chastening is taking place because I love it. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 12. God chastens those he loves. He's getting rid of all the Hophani and Phinehas, and they got a chance to repent. They still got a chance to repent. These, some of these leaders got a chance to repent. We need to be praying for these ungodly people that's all prosperity, not Jesus. We need to be praying for these people that's going into spiritual adultery. We need to be praying for the church as a whole, that we be that menorah, that bright shining light that is not hid under a bushel, that is not kept under anything and hidden, but is out there on the table for all, a city, like a city on a hill for all to see the Lord Jesus in us. Thank you.